Okay, so this is uh, lecture 23. So roughly, I think we we are halfway into the course. Okay, and we're doing fine. Thought we'll be too slow, but we're doing fine. Okay, so this class is going to be an illustration of the Viterbi algorithm. We'll uh, see an example, a couple of examples, and maybe some quick ways of bounding probability of error. Okay, so that'll be this class. Okay, so I'm going to start with the simplest uh, example out there for the Viterbi algorithm, which is uh, Just this uh, mz being 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 z inverse and what's uh, what's my mz going to be it's basically what is my mz let me see it's the it's the equivalent causal monic response right so i have I'm doing a spectral factorization on my received pulse and the monic causal part is mz okay so i'm going to say my transmit constellation is ppsk plus minus 1 okay so that's going to be my transmit constellation <coughs> right so the picture i should have in mind is uh, symbols are coming in into mz it's getting filtered by mz and you obtain received symbols to which noise gets added and then you receive something zk and you have to decode based on zk all right so i'm going to take an example situation it's quite simple so if you do a trellis for this, you'll get a two-state trellis. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to draw a very simple case where there are three stages and one termination stage, three data stages and one termination stage. Okay. So if you do the, draw the trellis for this. Would look something like this. Right? That would be the trellis. Okay. And uh, like I said, typically you work with a certain ZK which was received. Okay, so I'm gonna say ZK is so the transmitted symbols are either 0 minus root 2 plus root 2, right? So we'll take roughly root 2 as, what can we take root 2 to be roughly as? 1.4. Okay, so I'm going to take root 2 as 1.4. Then 1.4 minus 1.4 or 0 gets transmitted. And I'm going to receive that signal corrupted by noise. Okay, so that's what's going to happen. So I'm going to take minus 1.1. And then 0.3. Then minus 0.5, then uh, 1.6. Okay, so those are my received values. Okay, I'm trying to decode. Remember, I, I, how many symbols have I transmitted? If I have a stellar stellar like this for decoding, how many symbols have I transmitted? Yeah, it's only three data symbols. The last one was a termination right so the S sk would have length 3 bk would have length 4 okay sk 3 plus that extra plus 1 okay which was for termination right that was my sk all right so so i'll quickly write down the outputs corresponding to each branch below the branch and we'll write down the branch metric above the branch okay so the output corresponding to each thing is this Okay, so once I write for one complete stage, that's good enough. We don't have to keep writing for the whole thing. So the first exercise is to compute branch metric for each branch. Okay, so go ahead and do that.
done we see enough it's okay okay so i'm going to write down the branch metric up on top let me know if i make any mistakes Two point two one, no, one point two one. Am I right? One point two one, right? One point eight nine. Two point eight nine. One point seven, right? Okay. Okay. Numbers below are a little bit distracting. So, one point nine is three point six nine, right? Am I right? I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. So that's going to be point eight one. Yeah, yeah, right. This one will be three point six nine. Six one, na? Okay. Okay. So this would be one point six squared, which is two point five six. And then point zero four. Okay. How many of you think you can eyeball the ML path without doing any beta b? Two test trellis with four stages. You should quickly eyeball the minimum path, right? So it's not absolutely nothing in this. But anyway, we'll run the beta b, and we'll do maybe a slightly more complicated example the next time around. Okay? All right. So how does the beta b work? So you start with the state metric assignment, and then update the state metrics and the survival paths stage by stage. Okay? So initial state metric that you assign is zero for the known state before state zero. After that, if you look at this guy here, okay? Plus one, right? If you look at this plus one, I don't know if you can look at my uh, marker. It's a little bit too tiny. If you look at the plus one, there's only one branch coming into it. Okay, so obviously that has to be the survivor. There's no real choice. Okay, in your minimum, there's no problem. And the branch metric would be 1.21, and that would be the survivor. So I'll take, I'll put a red ink on the survivor. Okay. Likewise here, the state metric would be 0.09. And the survivor would be just that one path. There's no choice. Okay. Now you start getting choices. Okay, but the minimization is easy enough because you have only two paths coming into it, right? If you look at this plus one, okay, I'll put a question mark here. So this is what this is the one I'm looking at right now. There are two possible ways in which I could have come in. If I if I take the top route, right, the branch the path metric becomes 1.3. If you take the bottom route. Thing becomes what? No, 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 no. 1.3 again. Okay, so the bottom ones. 1.3 again. Okay, so I have to make a choice. What choice shall we make? Okay, so it turns out in those kind of situations you can choose anything. You can't go wrong. Okay, right? The ML path is any one. So we'll pick the top one. Okay, so top is always better. So we'll pick the top one. Survivor. Okay. So down below, if you come here, what happens? Right? Yeah. Point one eight and the bottom path. Okay. So that is clearly the survivor. Right? The other one is just too much. It goes to some whatever, four three point one or something. Four point one. Or something. Okay. So you don't have to worry about it. Right? So, so notice several things. Okay, so the, in, at the end of the first stage, right here, okay, you have only two possible paths. Okay, total number of paths up to that point is only two, and you kept track of both paths. Right here, how many paths do we have totally in the trellis up to that point? Four different paths. Do you see that? Right, two different inputs, four different paths. Okay, that's how you compute it. You don't have to go through the trellis and compute. But how many paths am I keeping track of? Only two. So I've already eliminated. Two paths, and that will continue stage by stage. In every stage, I'll eliminate half the paths. I'll only keep track of 
the remaining half which are survivors. So that's where the savings is coming. So that the way I, you remember the way I split all the parts as unions of several things. No? That I'm doing stage by stage. Okay, so I'm only keeping track of those parts that are important for me. Okay, so let's go through here. Once again, here it's it's quite easy. This is going to be what? 1.56 and the top part. This is going to be 0. Point, what is it? 43, no? Am I right? Okay, and the bottom part. 1.55, yeah? Thought I had 1.30, oh, that is okay. So for some reason I wrote. Okay, it's okay. I mean, it's not a big deal, but okay. So once again, I want to point out that at this point you should have actually had eight different parts, but you're only keeping track of two. Okay. So if you did not have termination, okay, what would you do here? Okay. So that's the question. If you did not have termination, you have two parts: one with metric 0.43, another with metric 1.55. If you did not have termination, what would you do? Yeah, so one decision to say is of these two parts, I'll take the one with lower metric, but that's not supposed to be ML. I mean, it's not really clear whether there's you know, some other path that would have ended in this stage with lower than 1.55, right? So, I mean, well, in this case, maybe it's too easy, but there are more, when you have more states and all that, you can't really decide between paths that are ending in those states, okay? So, because you can't compare a path that is ending in this state with a path that is ending in that state and throw one out because you don't know everything is ending at the same path. Right? So you can't do that. Okay, So that's the problem. So you can't really decide, but there are practical algorithms where people just pick the lowest path at this point. But usually there is termination. So you can go through for the next one and you will get only one path as the ML path. Okay, So when there's termination here, once again, it's very easy to see. This is 0.47 and the bottom path. Okay, So now you backtrack and write down your S cap as what? going to be minus 1, minus 1, and so on. Right? Okay, so it's away from ZK by a metric 0.47 and every other path in the trellis would have a metric which is larger than that. That much I'm guaranteed. Right? This is the closest that I can get to ZK on the trellis. Okay, so that's what my Viterbi algorithm guarantee. All right, so this is how you run the Viterbi, and it's 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 quite simple in most cases. It's no real uh, problem, but we're going to do one more example just for complicating matters and driving home some points. It's important to do that. And the next example I also want to do because we will do we will use it for some analysis later on. Okay, so it's a slightly more painful example, but I think it's good to do that. Okay, just to point out that the Viterbi can get really complicated once the number of states increase. Okay, so here we're going to take m of z to be 1 by root 2. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll do this just to make the matrix easier. I'll get rid of all these root 2s. I'll just simply take an m of z. Okay, but it may not be monic, it may not be normalized to 1, it may not be minimum phase, not, nothing like that. Okay, I'm not guaranteed. Just for example, I'm taking this. Okay, so we'll take. 1 minus z inverse plus zeta minus 2. Okay. Well, it is monic, but I don't know. Maybe some of you can do a quick computation and tell me if it's minimum phase or not. Okay. I'll take BPSK. By the way, how do you find if this is minimum phase or not? Find the zeros and the poles. Okay. All of them are inside the unit circle. Then it is minimum phase. Okay. What do you think? Do you think this will have poles? Okay, there are no poles, right? It's no question of poles. What about zeros? Where will the zeros be? It will have two zeros on the unit circle, right? So it is, it is, is it? Am I right? Will it have two zeros on the unit circle? No. Where will it have? Okay. Okay, anyway, think about it. I think this is a factor of 1 minus or 1 plus z power minus 3, right? So... So you can figure out where it will have. I think it has two zeros on the unit circle. That's what I think it is. Anyway, check it out. Doesn't matter. Okay. So let's do. Uh, so 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 now the number of states is what? 
4. Okay, we did the trellis before, the number of states is 4. So I'm going to, since the number of states is 4, I'm going to take a very, very simple example to make sure my life is uh, very simple. So I'm going to just take maybe 2 or 3 symbols once again, depending on how much space we have on the board. Okay, so that's, that's going to be the limitation. Okay, so the known state at the beginning we'll take as 1, 1. Okay, and then it will transition into two different possibilities 1 1 or minus 1 1 it's the first trellis then it will transition into again 1 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 minus 1 okay and then finally the stage will become complete All right. So if you notice, there's a subtle thing I did. What is the subtle thing I did in the ordering of the states? Okay. Yeah. So I, the first, the first possibility here, the state. What did I do for that state? I chose it as the third state. Okay. So you might say, there is some just makes my diagram maybe look look a little bit prettier. Okay. So those are things you might want to pay attention to. So okay, you don't have to do it, right? Even if you do it the other way, it will work. It will give you a valid trellis, but might become a little bit more ugly all right so okay so i think i'm going to terminate right after this okay so it's going to be plus one plus one and then plus one again Okay, so the trellis is fine. Okay, so we'll write down the outputs below the branch in the complete complete stage. Okay, and that should give you Okay, what are the outputs? <laughs> Top here. 1 minus 1. Is that fine? Minus one. This one is what? Minus three. Okay. Three and one. One and minus one. Okay, those are the outputs. Check and make sure I have not made any mistakes. Is it okay? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, one, no? Hmm? No, it's one. <laughs> Is it okay? Not getting enough heads to nod. Let me see. Spend some time. I'm sorry? Three. Three is wrong, huh? 
Now those are the outputs corresponding to each branch. That I am writing below the branch. It's not metric or anything. Okay. Why am I writing it in this stage and not here? Yeah, so it's all the same. Also, this stage has all the branches, right? This stage doesn't have some branch and then as I go along, I'll, I'll have to do it. So take one complete stage and then write down all the outputs below the branch. Okay, so then whenever you have to compute the branch metric, you can quickly look at that output and then use that for computing. So it's very easy to do that. So, okay, so now I have to give you the Z case. Z case I'm going to write on top. Okay, next to the stage. Okay, so these are things you can use. It's not too, not too bad. Okay, so I'm going to say 0.8. Okay, minus 1.1. Okay, 2.6. Okay, minus 0.9. And then 0.5. Okay, so those are my Z case. All right. So the next job is what? Once you have the Z case, write the branch matrix. Okay, go ahead and do that. So let me move my Z case a little bit further away so that. So you see already it's becoming painful if you have to compute all the branch metrics without doing the survivor part. So it's probably best to just compute the branch metrics as you go along instead of computing it ahead of time. Okay. So if you do that, here it's going to be 0 0.04, am I right? And down below it's going to be 1.8 square is what? Sorry, 3.24, is that fine? Okay, so likewise, keep going along. 2.1, I believe, is 4.41. Okay, here would be 0.01. Okay. Four point one squared would be what? So shall we say it's roughly sixteen? Okay. <laughs> okay. One seven six one. Okay, good. I don't know. It's okay. 17.61 is good enough. 1681? Okay. So there you go. That's the right answer for 4.1 squared. Okay. And then 2.1 again would be 4.41. Okay. All right. So, so let's do something now. Okay. Just to simplify matters. Okay. What's a branch metric? mod zk minus bk squared. Now that will split into mod zk squared plus mod bk squared minus 2 times bk zk. Okay, so we can write that as what? So mod zk squared we can definitely ignore, right? So we can write that as mod bk squared minus 2 times zk bk. Okay. So if you want to further split this, it looks going to be BK times BK minus 2 ZK. Okay, so this is a computation which is probably slightly simpler than uh, the other computation. Okay, so can I do it just arbitrarily starting at this stage? Can I use this different formula only for this stage? Yes? Yes or no? Yes, I can, right? So I can do whatever I want because as long as I'm consistent in each stage, I can subtract any quantity that is constant because the way I compare my path matrix, I'm doing it stage by stage and everything will pay the same penalty, so I'm okay. All right, so that's important. Okay, so let's see, maybe this calculation is easier. It's tougher, huh? <laughs> okay, so I don't know. Yeah, so maybe the squaring is easier. Okay, so 1.6 square is 2.56. 3.6 square is what? 
okay good so there you go we we'll go through and do a lot of computation okay once again 3.6 okay 5.6 squared okay sorry oh you have a calculator <laughs> okay some 30 3 6 good so this is 0.4 which is 0.16 okay so this is 2.56 so one thing I want you to notice is what? What is one thing you can notice here? Yeah, a lot of calculations are being repeated. The reason is there are only four different outputs possible for eight different branches, right? What are the four outputs? Plus or minus one, plus or minus three. In fact, plus or minus three occurs only for two. So one and minus one occurs for a lot of these things. So it's enough if you compute four of these squares you can quickly write down the remaining. Okay, so it's not a probably big problem. So let's go through here. 1.9 is 3.61. Am I right? And then 0 0.01. Okay. Then what? 3. 3.9. There you go. That's another interesting square to compute. I'm sorry. 15.21. There you go. Then. Uh, then you have uh, 1.9 again which is 3.61 right so finally we have an easy calculation which is 0.25 and 2.25 okay so who's, who's going to eyeball the ml path okay so it's a dangerous game to play but you can do it in this case also because when i gave you the z case i looked at the outputs and biased it towards made it very close towards one path which I wanted to take. Okay, so that's so why it's becoming very easy. If I had picked my ZK randomly, it would have been much more difficult to find the ML path. You'll have to actually do the Viterbi. Okay? So let's do Viterbi. If you do the Viterbi, you're going to start with the state metric 0 on the leftmost side. Okay, The state metric here is going to be 0 0.04. Here it's going to be 3.24. Okay? So the survivors are going to be full here. Okay, so the next state also you have only one path going into each state, right? Right. So notice that. So this is going to be 4.45. This is going to be some huge number. Okay, so I think it's 19, no, 20.05. Okay. So this one is 0.05. This one is 6. Point so 7.65 is that fine and if you write down the survivor path this is what's going to be so you have four survivor paths and uh, that is something which in general will be true what is the general statement we can make now if you have psi mu state with a b implies what right at stage mu after stage mu you will have exactly psi mu paths survivor paths okay so psi mu stage mu is complete okay no, let me not say it's complete it's a weird statement stage mu results in Psi mu paths, survivors. Okay. After that, what will happen? There will be only size size x power mu survivor paths after that. After that, it will not increase. Okay. So usually you will expect that to double after that, but it doesn't double after that. It becomes a constant. Okay. Let's go through here. Here it's going to be 4.45 plus 2.56, which is 7.01. Okay. Here you would get 0.21. Here you get 17.41. Uh, and here you get 2.61. Okay. And what are the paths? This guy. Here you have uh, this guy. Here you have this guy and here you have what this guy.
I'm sorry, three seven, no? Seventeen point three seven is it? Okay. It's okay, I'm just okay. Is it okay? So make sure how can it be seventeen point three seven man? It has to end in a one, no? Maybe three one. Seventeen point four one, no? For once, I'm doing it correctly, huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know there are too many numbers. Okay, so I want to make a few observations about what's happening to the survivor paths at this time. Okay, so write down the four survivor paths. Okay, as a sequence of states. Okay, can you do that? So number the states is 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, don't, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Don't do anything else. If you write down the survivor paths, survivor paths, okay, so well. What's happening? You will observe something that's slightly interesting. What has happened to the four survivor paths? What are the four survivor paths? 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so the first survivor path is 1, 1, 1, 1. What is the second survivor path? 1, 1, 3, 2. What is the next survivor path? I'm sorry? 1, 1, 1, 3. What is the last survivor path? 1, 1, 3, 4. Okay. So those are the four survivor paths after stage 3, well stage 2, 0, 1, 2, right? So the first thing you will notice about survivor paths ending at after any stage is what? This entry, the last entry is very easy to predict. What will the last entry be? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? In the same sequence it will come. Okay, there's no, there's nothing there in that thing. The last state of a survivor path has to be that state itself, whichever state you are in. Okay, so there's no problem. Okay, so what's what's interesting about the previous things? What has happened? Do you notice anything interesting? I'm sorry. Yeah, so the survivor paths have merged in the first stage. Okay, so what does it mean? So I know in my, my ML path is going to be one of these four, right? Right. Finally, the ML path will be one of these four. So what can I say even at this point, even before I go through and complete the whole thing? I can make my ML decision for the zeroth stage. What will be my ML decision for the zeroth stage? Plus one. My S cap for the zeroth stage is going to be plus one. I know for sure. Why? Because all my survivors have merged at that stage and that corresponds to a plus one transition. Okay. So that is something that is interesting which happens in a beta B which helps us in terms of complexity. Do you see why? Why would this help us in terms of complexity? Exactly. So, so what's happening is when you actually run the beta B for say L equals 1000 or something for 1000 symbols, you will have to store these paths for 1000 stages. Okay. So what's expected in a beta B is once you progress a little further, your survivor paths would have merged a little further behind which means from there you can actually make a decision and finish it off you don't have to wait till you fully complete so in terms of complexity in terms of memory and also in terms of what in terms of the latency that you encounter before you can make decisions this merging of the survivor path is an important uh, event that happens okay so typically what happens is people have some ballpark number like four times mu okay if you progressed for say small k stages, k minus 4 mu, at that point the survivor paths would have merged is one theory. Okay, So based on simulations people have that understanding. Okay, So if you don't have that thing, if you have to keep track of all the survivor paths and figure out where they are merging. Okay? So that's an interesting thing to do. Think about how you would program it. Okay, If you have to store all the survivor paths, what data structure will you use for their storage so that you know when they have merged. Right? Can you do that? Anyone here who has done programming with these kind of things before? So you think about it. So if you, is it possible to store these things efficiently in some structured way 
so that when they have merged a certain distance behind you will all automatically know it's easy to find okay it's it's difficult it's not that easy but maybe it's doable okay so think about it okay so that's some possibility there all right so this merging is, is quite crucial in terms of reducing complexity and all that okay so let's proceed to the next stage it's, it's quite easy to do from now on okay so you do this from now on it's automatic right there's no decision because if i sent only three data if i send more data there will be decisions from now on there is no decision do you see that okay just because there's no decision you can't say i'll decide on the survival path here why because the metrics are adding up you have to compare the metric till the last point am i right am i right or am i wrong no you still have to make decisions okay so look at this state there are two possible paths you have to decide on the one that's coming below and then you get 0.22 okay so it's much easier but still one needs to do some work okay so what is this 6.22 and the survival path is the one that came from below okay the next one is much easier again it's 0.47 okay so miracle of miracles we have the same minimum metric as the previous example okay did we get that did we get 0.47 for the previous one or 45 okay so this is called the freak of nature okay so once you do that you can decide s cap what is s cap going to be plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 that's it okay the remaining two i know for sure are plus ones all right okay so that's a slightly more complicated example if i had had one more stage with data you would have had to do real more complicated operations for one more stage and that becomes a problem all right so so in practice when you're running if you, if you if at all you want to run meter b so for a for a long stretch of data there are a lot of issues you have to worry about okay so let me try to point out a few issues first issue is some implementation issues which you might have to worry about okay i pointed these out even the last time around but i want to just go through that first thing is storage okay what all do you need storage for what all needs storing what's the crucial thing that needs storing okay the survivor paths have to be stored okay so that will pretty much be the overwhelming storage requirement okay what else needs to be stored see the branch metric need not be stored right when you come to a particular stage you compute the branch metrics right and then you use reuse the same memory okay even the state metrics need not be stored you only have to store them for two of them okay so the survival path memory will pretty much dominate your uh, requirement okay so what people do to so if if your length increases if you have to decode thousand symbols then your survival path might become too large okay so what people do to combat that is use some notion of what's called decoding depth roughly this is chosen to be say some 6 times mu okay so that's just a ballpark number we 5 times mu might be good you'll have to do simulations to check these things but maybe 6 times mu is a good number to pick okay so what does it mean when i say 6 times mu okay so i start at stage 0 i proceed up to some stage k okay i store my survival paths i look 6 mu behind okay so this is k minus 6 mu okay i'll kind of decide at this time that survival paths have merged at this point okay okay seems like a reasonable decision to make if you have some data structure which is which is turning on and saying hey the survival paths have merged here then you can make a decision without any problems but usually it's difficult at least in vlsa and all that in hardware to build such data structures so people don't do that you just pick a 6 mu and say at this point the survival paths have merged so how do i decide how do i decide on those things you take any one of those paths that are surviving here go 6 mu back and output that that's it and then what can i do i can throw away this memory and start storing only from this okay so you see in dsps in digital signal processors which say they can that can implement meter b they'll have the circular buffers okay 
So your whole buffer will have length only k, and after that you'll start rewriting from the beginning. So you'll keep writing in a circular buffer, and you'll have a flag which shows what the zeroth position is, and you'll implement it. Okay, so this is how decoding depth is done. So you go up to k, and then k minus six p we design. Okay, so it's slightly suboptimal, but you can do simulations and other arguments to show that it has to work. And if you know that the survivor parts have merged, there's nothing suboptimal about it. It's exactly optimal. Okay, so that's that's one thing to minimize your storage. The other problem you will have is in uh, over overflow for state metrics. Right? As your L becomes larger and larger, or even your K becomes larger and larger in what you're designing, right? You'll have an overflow problem. As in, what do I mean? The state metric keeps on accumulating. You saw before some some of the values can become very large. Okay. So usually you should imagine these state metrics are stored in fixed point format. Okay. So you can't have a huge dynamic range. Everything is poss not possible. So what people do is usually they subtract a constant and keep uh, making sure that the state metric lies within some range so that they can they have good uh, representation. Okay. So you basically subtract con a constant at each stage. Okay, so the third problem is one of latency. Okay, so the decoding depth actually also takes care of this latency issue, right? If you did not have a decoding depth, okay, so you you would have to go through the entire sequence before outputting the first one, and that might be too much latency for you to tolerate in a communication system. You might you might expect the results to come out much faster. Okay. So for that decoding depth to an extent solves the problem. Solves the problem to an extent, but even otherwise, naturally the Viterbi seems to be a very sequential algorithm which cannot be run in parallel. What do I mean by parallel? Suppose I receive a sequence of L outputs, I can't start decoding the 0th and the 10th and the 11th or 12th at the same time right i have to start at 0 and only when i have decoded everything i can proceed okay so that also is a problem parallelism is a problem and there are solutions for parallelism as well okay so this is an interesting solution again uses the properties of the viterbi algorithm suppose you have a very long sequence that has been received what people do is split it up into different windows and you let the windows overlap okay so here you have you have the first window right this will be the first window okay the second window will overlap by say some 4 mu or some such ballpark number okay with the first window this is the second window and so on okay the successive windows will overlap by 4 mu or 6 mu or whatever number you pick so now what what will happen is you will start here as well as here in parallel okay so here you assume you know what the initial state was so you know how to put the zero state state metric here what will you do to start off you don't know anything right so you don't know the metrics there so what you'll do is you'll put zero for everything okay you'll put equal state metric zero for everything and start by the time you have run through to four mu or six mu stages what would have happened so there will be significant difference between the state metrics and somehow the memory would have taken care of it and you would have obtained some advantage from the viterbi okay so even though you did, you've made a suboptimal choice of all zero state metrics at this point, which you did not know, but you wanted to start ahead of time because you wanted to run both in parallel, right? So so that you can decode very fast. Okay. So but by the time you run through four mu stages in the second window, there would have been enough metric that would have picked up, and the erroneous paths would have been, had larger metrics, and the valid path probably would have had shorter metric, and there would be enough differentiation, and the state metrics here might be accurate. Okay. So the state metrics here might be okay. Okay, by the time you start there. Okay, so you go through, run your second window, and when you make decisions on your second window, you stop up to this point. You don't go all the way back to the four mu. Okay, do you see that? Okay, so is this clear or 
it's roughly not clear okay so so when i make decisions when i trace back how do i trace back i don't trace back all the way to the beginning of my window i stop here okay so the second window right okay so let me say this is 0 this is maybe l1 okay so this is l1 minus 4 mu this is uh, l2 okay so the first window works on stages 0 to l1 plus 4 mu okay so it's actually work l1 plus okay let me say 8 mu here be very careful so maybe maybe 4 mu okay so that's fine okay so it works from stages 0 to l1 plus 4 mu second window would work from no wait i'll come back to it i'll come back to it stages l1 minus 4 mu to what l2 plus 4 mu okay so why am i doing this 4 mu 6 mu okay i want some enough decoding depth to decide for stage l1 okay so this is what the window b will run beta b will run so this is for just the running okay so if you look at decisions this is just the beta b if you look at decisions right okay the decisions for the first window will be from what to what 0 to l1 minus no 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 0 to l1 okay the second window will be l1 plus 1 to l2 do you see that okay so remember every time if, if i want to make a decision on stage k i should have run my vita b forward till k plus 4 mu or 6 mu or some such thing and only then can i make a decision on stage k okay so i want my first window to run so that i can make decisions from 0 to l1 which means the first window actually should run forward for l1 plus 4 mu then i can use my decoding depth and make a decision okay but for my second window to start even my initial metric is bad okay so when i run actually for the decoding depth only my last metric will be bad so i am running through because i have not terminated right so i am running through further and coming back but for my second window even the starting point is bad so i can't start where i want to decide i have to start 4 mu or 6 mu before run through i know there will be some overlap it seems like wasteful decisions but you have to work with that if you want more parallelism in your beta b okay so this is called the windowed beta b okay and uh, today's wireless systems for instance try to use windowed beta b because you want faster data rates right so you, you don't want you, know, you want faster data rates everything has to go fast so you, you implement windowed versions of these algorithms in practice today okay so it's considered much better okay so i'll stop here for now i think uh, i think this is pretty much all i wanted to say in terms of Viterbi and next class we will pick up on some simple analysis and we will proceed further with equalization.